Let's come on now on the deepening crisis in Eastern Europe and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We can speak live to Ukrainian football expert Andrew Todos, who joins us now. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for, for joining us during what is increasingly, uh, I'm sure, a very distressing time uh, for you. Uh, before I ask anything else about sport, I just want to know how, how are you? How are you coping with it? Friends and family, everything? Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's been a very difficult time these past few days, weeks. Uh, I've been keeping OK because I'm in London, but lots of worries for friends over there. The majority of them are safe, but, you know, the situation is so fluid, you don't know what's going to happen next. So yeah, it's a troubling time, sadly. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of the footballing matters, Ukraine, uh, football in Ukraine has been suspended. We've seen Shakhtar Donetsk's Brazilian players appealing for help. What is the situation facing players in the country right now? Well, the funny thing is, is that at the moment there's not been much information from clubs, etc., in terms of what's happening with the players. But I feel that a lot of them are free to leave. It's just the difficulty of getting players out there because obviously the majority of airports have been um, bombed. There's been lots of just issues to try and logistically get out because there's traffic jams everywhere with people trying to flee for the West. So it's it, it's a tough time, but I feel that they will be able to leave eventually. It's just a, a matter of time and um, logistics once that comes to pass. Obviously, football's not the priority at all, Andrew. But, I, I mean, we're just looking at fixtures ahead. Scotland due to play Ukraine, a World Cup playoff next month. I mean, surely that, that fixture's in doubt now, is it? Yeah, I guess there are questions as to whether it will be played because even though uh, about half of the Ukraine squad play abroad, so they will technically not be affected by this, about, you know, half of the squad does play domestically in Ukraine for the likes of Shakhtar and Dynamo. So they won't have any preparation if it comes to it. Evidently, the UAF in Kyiv, uh, where there's been airstrikes overnight, um, the city that held the Champions League final just four years ago, may I add. So it, it's a completely developing situation. I think we'll have to wait and see what exactly happens. But we're looking towards uh, UEFA and FIFA to sanction Russia very hard. And that's what UAF, the Ukrainian Association of Football, has been asking them to do. And hopefully we'll see the results of that later today. Yeah, and we've seen all those displays of solidarity with Ukraine in football and across Europe. What part does sport have to play in this crisis? And, and do you think it's doing enough? <laughs> well, I think that sport... Well, the fact of the matter is, is that UEFA and FIFA can definitely do more. What UAF have called on UEFA and FIFA to do is suspend um, as long as this conflict goes on. Um, both Russian national teams and Russian clubs from all UEFA and FIFA competitions. We saw yesterday that Gianni Infantino was completely avoided the question. Really, he wasn't. He was scapegoating around it due to his friendship with Vladimir Putin. And UEFA are going to make their decision shortly, I think, in an exec meeting. Uh, I think that St. Petersburg definitely will be stripped of the Champions League final. But is that enough in itself? I don't think that's going to deter Putin or help him to stop this invasion. With regards to sport as a whole, though, I think it is very much intertwined with political situation, with societal situation. It's got a responsibility to maybe not show some sort of... Uh, aid, support in terms of arms or anything, but it can certainly show solidarity. Fans, I've been calling on my Twitter this week, if you're in the UK or anywhere in the world, really, bring a Ukraine flag to the stadium this week and show some solidarity with Ukraine and the situation that's going on. It's a ma mass scale invasion on a, top, on a European capital, on a European country. And, you know, it's unprecedented what's happening. Uh, on top of that, we've seen a lot of Ukrainian footballers show support the most vocal probably being uh, Alexander Zinchenko at Man City, who's been very uh, vocal of his criticism of Putin and of um, sort of Russians not doing, doing this to Ukraine. Andrew, I've spoken to you before on the channel, and, and I must say I can, I can tell in the way I'm chatting to you now that this, this must be really affecting you at the moment. How... How, how does it feel seeing these pictures of your country in the situation that they're in at the moment? I mean, I can only imagine how awful this must be for you personally. 
Yeah, so for example, due to my uh, football work last summer uh, with the podcast crew that I do, me and two mates, we did a road trip around all of Ukraine. And to put into context, Ukraine is the biggest country wholly in Europe, 6,000 kilometers. We drove around it all other than the occupied areas at the time. So we've been to the likes of Mariupol, Kramatorsk, on the, or just where the former front line was. We've been to near Crimea, where uh, the where the invasion has, you know, come up from the south. So we know all these people. We've got friends in all of all of the clubs around the country. And it's sad, like one of my friends who is a supporter of Kramatorsk, who's right near the front line, his uh, best friend was uh, murdered and tortured in 2014, age 16, for having a Ukraine ribbon on the back on his backpack. He was a promising goalkeeper. And, you know, age 16, he was just murdered by the occupation forces back then. And he told me yesterday, he said, I'm going to join the territorial defence. What else is there to lose? So that's very much the situation at the moment. We're, we're fighting till the death here um, for our independence and freedom. Yeah, and Andrew, I mean, as Pete keeps saying, it, it does put things into perspective in terms of football and in terms of sports. Um, you have already touched upon it in terms of the sanctions and things like that and what sport can actually do. But what would be your main message to sport, to UEFA, to everyone in terms of just what they need to do to address this? Uh, yeah, for example, I would say from a start, complete isolation of Russia from all sporting events, not just um, FIFA, UEFA, but also the IOC, which they've done a sort of a very hash job of um, letting them compete after all the doping issues. They must be completely isolated from the mass game because sport is a massive propaganda event for Russia. It shows how sort of great they are. And this needs to be sort of quashed and the less and less influence they can have on the wider world the the more power Ukraine will have to, you know, battle in the hybrid war. So just this information war, which sport comes under. You've just told us you, that desperately sad story about your friend and, and, and his, his, him saying that he's going to, you know, de fight to the death to defend his country. I mean, we've heard the mayor of Kiev, Vitaly Klitschko, uh, alongside his brother Vladimir, saying that they themselves are going to arm themselves to defend their country. I mean, it just sums up the desperation of this situation, doesn't it? I mean, what, what's your reaction to hearing sporting legends like that say the same thing as, as you mentioned your friend has said? Of course it's tragic, but I think there's a sense of pride for Ukrainians that this is our country, we've done absolutely nothing wrong. There's basically a fascist dictator who's come and invaded a peaceful country that was really on the up, especially since 2014. Massive improvements, massive improvements just in terms of infrastructure, um, just people living their lives freely. And this could potentially take, be taken away by a crazy maniac who hopefully will pay for his crimes, for his war crimes, because, um, yeah, it's, it's disgraceful, really. Andrew, we really appreciate you giving us sort of your views today, your thoughts on everything that's going on. And, of course, we, we, we wish you well here from Sky Sports News. Thanks for having me on.